In today's Lockdown Lab, we've got two little experiments to show you how cells react to being put in different solutions. It's all gonna come down to osmosis and what happens to the water when you mess around with those conditions. Let's do it. Okay, so first of all, we're gonna play with some plant cells. Uh, we're gonna use red onion for this. Red onions have got a pigment inside the vacuole in their cells called an anthocyanin. Nice purple pigment makes things nice and easy to see down a microscope uh, and follow what's going on. So first of all, I'm gonna want a single layer of cells. Uh, so onions uh, made up of lots of leaves sort of stacked together. So we can peel away the very top layer of one of those leaves. Uh, it's called the epidermis, and we'll be able to make a nice thin section from that to put on our slides. So that's job one. Okay, so we've got our onion epidermis. We're now gonna make three separate slides of this. So we're gonna make three little microscope slides, put them in three different conditions uh, and see what happens to those cells. So we've got three slides, uh, each with a piece of red onion on there. We're gonna put those in the three different conditions. So I've got distilled water, uh, which we're gonna put on one of the slides. I've got a 0.85% salt solution, which should in theory be isotonic. So we should have the same water potential uh, inside and outside the cell. And then I've got a 2.5% salt solution as well, um, which should give us then a lower water potential outside the cells than in. We're gonna put each of those three down the microscope and see what happens over a period of time. So you can see here are three conditions. On the left there, we've got the ones that were in pure water. So this is distilled water. We had a much higher water potential outside the cell than we had inside. What that's meant is the water's moved into the cells and those cells have swollen up. Uh, now in plants, we call this turgidity. We've described those cells as turgid. Uh, what that means is that they've got lots of water in them. The vacuole is full of water and it's pushing on the outside of the cell. Um, the ones in the middle, those are our flaccid cells, so there hasn't been much change in there. Water hasn't left or entered, um, or the net change is zero, so uh, those cells are as they were at the beginning. You can see they've stayed the same throughout. The ones on the right-hand side there, those have been what we call plasmalized. So these were our cells in salt solution. Those cells have lost their water, so the water potential on the inside of the cell was higher than it was on the outside of the cell, uh, and what that means is that water has left the cell. So the water has all gone out of the cell and the cell has started to shrivel up. Now because plant cells have a cell wall into which the cell membrane is anchored, what you get is that pinching away, which you can see on the micrograph on the right hand side there, with the shrinking of the vacuole um, pulling away from the cell wall and, and losing volume. You can also see that the red coloration has got darker there. That's because it's more concentrated. So the water has left the cell and left a more concentrated solution of that pigment behind it. So that's plant cells. Now we're gonna have a look at some animal cells and that means we need a blood sample and that means a needle fillet. Okay, so that was pretty painless. We used a little sterile lancer just to prick the end of my finger. We got a few drops of blood out. We're gonna do exactly the same thing with these as we did with the onion earlier. So I've got three drops. We're gonna put one in distilled water, one in an isotonic 0.85% salt solution, and one in 2.5% salt, and see what happens to all three. So we've been recording our slides for 20 minutes or so now, uh, and you can see here the changes that those cells have undergone. So again, you can see the three different reactions of the different cells based on the different solutions that they were put into. Uh, so on the one hand, we had the concentrated salt solution. You can see there that the water has left those cells. They've started to shrivel up. Now in plant cells, we call that plasmolysis. Uh, in animal cells, we call that crenation. In the middle there, we've got the red blood cells that were in the 0.85% isotonic solution. Those ones are fine. That's the same as the blood plasma. Uh, and so those cells haven't lost or gained water. On the right-hand side there, you can see those cells have burst. There just aren't as many anymore. 
That's because the distilled water outside the cell had a higher water potential than the cytoplasm inside the cell. So that water has moved in. Those cells have swollen up and eventually burst. This is what we call lysis uh, and is a real problem with putting animal cells in particular into water. Same reason why you hear doctors talking about saline drips to rehydrate people. We don't put water into people because it can damage cells. We need to make sure that osmotic balance stays the same and that's why we use that 0.85% isotonic saline solution for all these things. So that's the impact of osmosis on cells. I hope you enjoyed our little foray into the microscopy world. Stick around for the next video where we're looking a little bit more quantitatively on how osmosis is impacting some plant tissues. Otherwise, if you're a fan of algorithms, then the YouTube one has decided that you would like to watch these.